will laugh with you. They will smile with you. They will listen to your jokes. They will even take your advice. They'll even go on trips with you. They'll even be nice to your family. Your family may even like them. Their family may even like you. But all the while, they are despising everything within your presence, everything within your character. They are despising your beauty. They are despising your personality. They envy you. They wait for the moment for you to disappoint them, for you to not come through for them. And the moment that you fail them, you will see a whole new different side. Welcome to my episode, Female Dark Tales. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is your girl, Yaziva, in knowledge. Lady Mocha, represent Mocha's Cafe de Paris, where I'm always serving you wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual awareness. Hope everybody's Thanksgiving has been blessed. Um, you was able to spend time with your family, see your friends. You have a little time off from work so you can woosah, you know, and hopefully everybody was able to make it back to their destinations safely whether you flew by plane or rather uh you were on the road uh driving to your destination just hopefully everybody made it back safely so nevertheless i've been spending time with my family so that's why i haven't been uploading and plus you know you i needed to preserve my mental space and i think it's very important that sometimes as a content creator you take a break from these youtube streets and you maintain and you get yourself together. So, nevertheless, y'all, I want to move directly into today's recipe. What's on the menu? Everybody's been talking about it. The Shan Quilla Robinson um, situation that occurred with a young lady who allegedly um, has been suspected of being murked by her friends, uh, who she, who was currently on the trip with her at the time. Um, at the cause of her demise so I'm not gonna go all into that I know y'all already know the stories several bloggers are hitting on it so I'm not going to go all into the details but um, that's basically what we do know is she went to Cabo Mexico to vacation with her friends 24 hours later the businesswoman was found deceased so since the news of her death began circulating on the internet, a video of one of her friends, reportedly Dejanae Jackson, was the young lady who was actually beating her up um, in the video. And, and she actually physically assaulted this young lady um, before this young lady met her demise. But again, the attack was very brutal. It was recorded. It was viral. Everybody's seen it. And I will say this much. Uh, my heart was really shattering because my daughter uh, is 21 years old. And she's been very trusting with friends. I've seen her girlfriends do her dirty. She was in a similar situation once upon a time when she tried to defend a friend. And she ended up in the physical altercation. With a situation she had nothing to do with but just being so loyal and trying to be down for a friend, her friend stood there and watched her have to fight her battle. Fortunately, it didn't resort to a tragic ending. Fortunately, it was a small cat fight, but it was a lesson for her to learn that you cannot, you know, be fighting your friend's battles because sometimes you'll fight their battles and you end up you end up being the one hurt fighting somebody else's battle. And also, you cannot trust friends. You cannot think because you're so loyal to people that they're going to give you that same loyalty in return. So, um, it was a lesson learned for her. But this young lady here, unfortunately, didn't get a chance to learn her lesson because it resulted in her losing her life. So, I want to share my personal story. And this is the segment I call um, uh, the Black Female Tales, in which I will be sharing stories in which black women being betrayed by other black women are in worst case scenarios black women who have lost their lives at the hands of other envious shady low down gut bucket ass black females so 
Um, again, this is not just a black woman issue. Um, this happens to all women of all cultures. Uh, you got no good ass females um, all over the globe. <laughs> Indian, Puerto Rican, uh, white. You know, I've seen white women do each other in and, you know, set their girlfriends up to get murked and everything so it's not just a black woman issue let me point that out but it is an issue when you're dealing with other females that are envious of you that have low self-esteem who have no worth in themselves and the only way they could build confidence to find self-worth is by trying to destroy another woman so i want to share my story in tribute to the Shanquilla Robinson because all women at some point in time um, have ran into a Dejanay, you know, uh, in Dejanay, that's the one female, because uh, I can't even consider her a woman, that's the beast, um, who physically attacked this woman um, on, 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 the, on um, the video footage that went viral. So much to the point that this female has so much masculine energy, y'all. Do y'all not know that a lot of people believe this girl was a, tran a transformer? A lot of people kept saying that they thought she was a man because she looks masculine. And not only she looks masculine, she acted very masculine in the situation by physically pounding on a female who wasn't even trying to fight back. And you can tell she felt so much empowerment, you know, uh striking this young lady who was not trying to challenge her not trying to fight her back not because she's weak i don't think she was weak i think that had nothing to do with it even though the, the guy who was holding the camera amping the sh amping it up you know saying damn you're not gonna fight back you're not gonna do nothing this young woman wanted peace for one she thought this was her friends for two three you somewhere where you got no backup your family not with you nobody's not the, the coming to your defense you know pulling you out and rescuing you from a situation that they see your life is in danger i was once upon a time a I, I was close to being in a shaquilla robinson situation there's no joke i'm not lying to none of you guys all you ladies as my subscribers i'm not sharing the story for clout i'm not sharing the story so people can empathize and sympathize with me but it's a lot of sisters who have gone through this and some of us were blessed to live and tell the story such as myself and i am going to share it with y'all and again this is nothing i made up this is nothing I'm doing for clout. None of that. This is a real situation. And the reason why I'm, I'm being transparent and talking about it is because I, for one, have a daughter. And I can only imagine being a parent, seeing your child in that situation, knowing you wasn't there, knowing you seeing what's going on, but you can't jump in that camera and pull your child, deliver your child. You know, you, you seeing a disastrous situation. And to know how it resulted just adds more insult to injury. And all women at some point in time, I would say a lot of us have encountered similar situations, if not as drastic as um, Shanquilla Robinson. So I'm going to share with y'all my story to let y'all know as women, we need to be very careful who we confide in, who we consider as friends, know your place, know when somebody's just an associate, know when somebody is just good company, know when somebody's actually a friend, just, no, 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 know when a woman is a good business partner. You have to place certain women in certain positions in your life and you keep them there for that purpose and that purpose only. And we make a detrimental mistake as women when we try to make these females more solid in our lives than what they deserve to be so picture this y'all true story okay nothing uh, nothing i'm making up okay this actually happened to me okay i'm just blessed to live to tell the story okay so picture back 1999 i'm 19 years old just graduated high school um in my youth you know uh no children not married staying with my parents um just graduated high school and i was going through this phase with my parents in which all of us have been there where you think you know more than your parents 
And now that you graduated high school and now that you over the age of 18, I got in that place in which I felt like I was grown. Nobody could tell me nothing. I done got my high school diploma. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. And now I can party. I can club. I can run the streets. I don't have no curfew. So this was my mind frame of I'm grown. I mean, I'm going to do what the hell I want when I want. And I don't have to abide by nobody. Okay, now I'm having this attitude why i'm living with my parents at the time and uh it got to a point in which uh i ended up having a, a very turbulent relationship with my father um uh, my stepmom she didn't too much intervene too much you know and how me and my father um bonded with each other or interacted with each other um but the more and more i got out of hand with my father she ended up having to intervene more than what i was used to her doing and of course it was at my fault, but at that time I didn't look at it that way. Now that I'm a mother, I understand, but at that time you gotta look at look at this from the mindset of a 19 year old. So nevertheless, I'm in this phase. So um, I'm running the streets, living my best life, doing what I wanna do, no kids, no husband, living my best life, living it up, enjoying myself as a 19 year old. So I remember I used to go to the mall a lot, you know, that was my little hangout spot, going to the mall. And there was this one particular store that I would go to all the time. I'm sure some of you ladies remember it. I don't see too many of these stores, but a store called Claire's. So the store was called Claire's, okay? Claire's is where they sell accessories, jewelry, necklaces, or whatever for mostly a girly, a girly type of store, okay? You don't see too many men up in there unless they buying something for their girlfriend or taking their daughter in there to get something or whatever. But anyway, so... I remember there was this older female, dark skin, petite. Um, if y'all hear something squeaking, y'all, that's my raggedy ass chair. If y'all willing to cash app and donate so I can get a better one. Other than that, we got to deal with the squeak. <laughs> I'm trying not to move too much. So anyway, I see this older female while I'm in class and she compliments my outfit. And I can tell the way she looks, you know, she's older. Uh, dark skin, petite, but I can tell what she was wearing. She was a female that was a dresser. She had style. She knew how to dress. So when she complimented my outfit, uh, I took that as a compliment. I was like, oh, thank you. You know, and next thing I know, you know, one conversation, one simple compliment ended up resorting to a conversation i can't remember all the details y'all this is 1999 okay i was 19 so um anyway we ended up vibing we vibed really well and um i remember at the time i had my own vehicle and she uh you know we realized we had a couple of things in common and um we decided that you know hey why not just hang out you know and, and at that time really i didn't have a lot of friends um, I never was the type of female. I never ran in clicks. I didn't have a lot of friends only because my mindset was so different than a lot of the females. So I wasn't really able to vibe. But the fact that she was older, um, it made it seem so much more pleasant to find a female that I can vibe with and bond with. So I'm like, this is cool, you know, because I've always been, even at 19 years old, I've had the mindset of a damn 30 year old. So I can never vibe with females my age, you know, as, as far as on a spiritual and intellectual level. So anyway, so she decides to invite me um, to our house for dinner. She said, won't you stop by and hang out? You know, I'm, I don't really kick it with females like that. This is not either. Now, as I proceed with this story, I'm going to stop and, and bring in some points. Because I want you females to get this. And I want you guys who got daughters. Um, if you want to let them watch this video as well. So you don't end up heartbroken like Shanquilla Robinson's um, father. I, I, I would advise that you share this information with your daughters, with your niece, or a female in your family that you love. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of points in this. So th the first thing was thinking because we had a few things in common that we supposed to automatically vibe. Um, and I'm going to be giving y'all some lessons as I, I'm, as I'm telling the story. That's a big mistake that a lot of women make thinking because you and the female have a few things in common. Oh, we like the same food. Oh, we like the same, uh, sh uh, uh, you know, clothing stores. Oh, we like the same rap group or whatever. You automatically 
take that and as incentive as a, a friendship is supposed to be bonded. And that's so far from the truth. Just because you have a few things in common with somebody, it does not mean y'all need to automatically be friends. Um, the second thing in this particular phase of the friendship, um, the fact that she was older. Um, this is another mistake a lot of women, a lot of young women. Um, I tell my daughter the same thing. She has older female friends that, um, you know, sometimes younger women, we can take a very strong liking to older women, especially young women that are very knowledgeable and highly intelligent. We don't like to deal with goddamn airheads. We can't vibe with females on our age. So with older women... Um, it, it's the, the friendship seems to be more genuine, but this is not necessarily the case. Um, just because a female is older than you and she can teach you a few things and she can school you on a few things, it does not mean that she is automatically friend material. This is somebody that you should bond with. And um, the third thing was um, you don't need to hastily try to build a friendship um, right off the muscle. You gradually um, let it build when you force something or you make everything so uh, uh, you're, you're building the friendship in such a, a um, hasty manner in which y'all already, here it is the first day, we are already talking about, don't know each other from Adam now, we are already talking about going to her house, having dinner, and, and you know, having fun like we know each other from back in the day. So just pointing out some, some things that you need to look for as the story goes on, okay? So, uh... I go to her house, and again, you know, she she is a, she was a Scorpio like I was. Um, I'm 19 at the time; she's 27. Okay, so when she invited me to her crib, it was cool to have a female friend who actually had her own place because 19, most of your friends your age are living with their goddamn parents. You feel me? So it was cool to hang out with an older female because she had her own spot her own crib so you know i thought that was cool you know um we was able to watch tv just kick it chill and um over time you know we ended up being close uh i mind you at the time she had her own apartment but uh i did not know until i got there that she was a mother of two um she had a son and she had a daughter who was i would say like uh 10 and 11 at the time um it was like a year or so apart kids seemed to be very polite um pretty much you know you could tell she kind of had her kids in check they pretty much did whatever she said did so it was cool having an older friend with her own crib but we could just eat you know chill and her parents ain't there and stuff so um mind you she was this was section a housing okay <laughs> it was not her place but you could tell she was a single mom struggling but at the same time she was maintaining and doing everything she had to do to take care of hers and her children herself and her children which i respected and admired at the time y'all i'm drinking my peppermint mocha so if i pause in between i got down my cappuccino y'all because bad enough when i'm done with this upload i'm gonna have to go damn work out and i don't even feel like it so i gotta do it all right now so so anyway she had a brother who was also um close to her in age i think he i think i think she, he was like two years younger than her or whatever and uh um she knew at the time because we had conversations that you know i was going through a stage in which i really wanted a boyfriend really you know wanted like a relationship type thing because we was very open and transparent with each other which another thing i don't advise a female do until y'all have um earned earned ha have um gained longevity in the friendship i don't think you need to be too open with a female that you have not known that long and and, and and being too transparent let her know all of your inner feelings all of your inner thoughts because um unfortunately you know it, later on in due time it could be used against you but we'll talk about that later as the story goes on so she initially tried to hook me up with her brother you know and all of that and uh i just you know uh getting to know her and being around her i found out her brother had been with a lot of her goddamn friends secondly he was not my type um so i'm like mm, nah <laughs> i don't you know what i mean her brother was definitely trying to try me and i just was not feeling him like that because i found out later that he had been with the majority of her friends so i'm like damn why are you trying to hook me up with your brother who done been with you know what i'm saying all of your friends and i over time now um as our friendship grew i met her other friends right 
And once I found out that they had been with her brother, I'm like, why the hell is you trying to, you know what I mean? Hook me up with your brother, you know? And um, knowing he been with, you know, majority of other females, you know, because that, that could have caused problems. You know, I'm meeting your other friends who done been with your brother. And when if I would have ended up with your brother and we was together, so, you know what I mean? That I don't like, even at the age of 19 years old, I wasn't feeling shit like that. I don't want a man that everybody done been with. You know what I mean? So anyway, I, just to show you the, the level of immaturity she had on certain things. You know what I mean? And not to mention when you and the, you and the guy break up, you know, you still friends with a sister, you know, that can cause a strain in y'all friendship depending on, you know, how things go or something, you know, so I just, I ain't care for that, but anyhow, so anyway, uh, we would go to clubs a lot, keep in mind she was older than me, I did not know a lot about the club scene, so, uh, I was the one who had the car, and she was the one who had the apartment, you know, so, it was a win-win as far as, you know, friendship-wise, because I was able to drive us wherever we wanted to go, and, um, she, on the other hand, was able to ride with me anytime, you know what I mean, we wanted to go up and go somewhere, and I kicked it out of her apartment, I was able to stay the night there and all of that and everything, so all was cool and a couple steady, so we would go to the club a lot. Now, what I did not know was, um, she knew a lot of the guys in their neighborhood. She was very, very well known. Being 19 years old at the time, um, I did not I, I was naive just thinking she was popular <laughs> because she knew all of these guys when I said she knew a lot of ninjas everywhere we went I don't care if it was to the hair store what's up neat what's up they used to call her neat for short I ain't gonna say her real name I'm just saying neat so what's up neat how you doing what's up we go uh, walking past the barbershop. What's up, Neat? We go to the grocery store. What's up, Neat? I'm like, wow, she knows a lot of dudes. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you know, maybe because she's just real well-known. She popular. She went to school with them. You know, uh, but I found out over time she had been with multiple men. She was very, very promiscuous. Uh, but she was one of those type of females. She didn't really perceive herself as a thought or Jezebel, she perceived herself as being very sexually liberated, like, I am I get the D when I want the D, how I want the D, she didn't look at it like, you know, men was running up and through her, she looked at it like she was one of those uh, female empowerment, like, you know, sexually empowered females, like, nah, I'm getting, I get them when I want them, you know what I mean, and I didn't realize she had been with a lot of the guys. And it was, if she wasn't with all of them, she'd been with their friends and stuff. So she was really, really out there like that. You know what I mean? And, and even some of the guys and dudes she was kicking it with, I, you know, found out some of them were married and stuff like that. So she was very promiscuous. And she and she really loved sex. She loved sex. Um... And she, uh, you know, she, she definitely, um, was not ashamed about her sexuality or whatever. She was very open, um, with it. So, um, nevertheless, we would go to these clubs, um, we'd hang out and I would notice, um, over time as we would go to clubs, you know, I, I would notice she was very easy with men. Um, you know, she'd have a conversation with them. They'll have a drink or two and she's bringing this dude back with her or she's leaving with him. She's having me to drop her off, you know, to his apartment and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, I've always, I've always was kind of uncomfortable about stuff like that because I'm like, even at the, at the mindset of a 19 year old, I'm like, these men are strangers. You know, how you feel comfortable with you just met them at the club and stuff like that and you already going to their crib or they coming to yours and this had happened numerous occasions this wasn't a once in a part once in a um blue moon type thing um she would be on the dance floor with men especially when she get her drink on drink her bacardi and she was definitely a drinker uh, a alcoholic and anytime you have a female female friend ladies that's an alcoholic um you really will see the true uh the, the really true them 
from their alcohol because alcohol gives people a lot of what's called liquor 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 courage and even though when people get drunk they'll say uh that's not me i was in a different space or whatever i just think liquor and, and I, I just think alcohol period it enhances all of the bad qualities you've been possessing if you was already a hoe before you get drunk you're gonna be even more hoish when you get drunk if you was already combative and like to fight you're gonna become even more combative and like to fight and i would just you know kind of see how loose she was on the dance floor the way she would dance with these guys and you could tell she was a uh, attention starved because of you know she, she would do certain dances and stuff in which it would draw the crowd to her where everybody's looking at her like oh man you know and, and she in her mind is like attention but people are looking at her as a freak you know but when you already a freak or a promiscuous woman and you celebrate uh, being a hormonger is it's like uh, freedom to you, you don't look at it as being disgraceful. And that's how it was. I mean, I would see her on the dance floor with these guys doing her, you know, uh, they call it twerking now, but back then they called it something else. I think they just called it, you do your little booty dance, whatever. And, um, you know, she would, she would do she she had this thing of always wanting eyes on her all the time and the thing about it is i know that she would always get guys but she could never keep them. she could never keep them like if i would notice like when she pick up these guys and she bring them over a couple of times or she go over to their space you don't see them no more after about a week and here it is, she's bringing another guy in, you know, so I would notice, again, being 19, not really understanding, but I knew that she was being too easy. I, I knew, I had that much of the concept um, understood that she was giving herself away so easily um, to guys. And, the, and seeing how men would treat her after they got what they wanted, the man being distant, not coming around, she calling them, they egging her, and I, seeing all of this, as much as I didn't want to have to go through what I ended up going through, I learned a lot seeing the way she carried herself as a woman, how men will treat you depending on how you carry yourself accordingly. So I did learn seeing her being promiscuous while she thought she was winning because she was getting the D or uh, good wood or whatever i seen how men disrespected her you know and, and treated her um like low class you know after after they done got what they wanted from her so um over time as the friendship continued um i started seeing a lot of sides of nita that i realized um this broad was not all of what she pretended to be in the friendship um and uh, you you really find out about a woman as far as friendship wise when you hang around them a lot y'all go out a lot the more y'all stay in each other's company you're going to start seeing more and more things about that person that you end up ir that ends up irritating you that's why i tell females and i tell my daughter the same thing less is best see your girls every once in a while but listen all that hanging out and clubbing every weekend you don't want to do that less is best the less y'all in each other's space the, the better off y'all are so i started having problems at home with my peoples okay because again i'm being stubborn i'm wanting to do what i want to do 19 you know talking back to my father and he got to the point where he just couldn't deal with it anymore he gave me a time frame he said look you gonna have to get up out of here in like a month or so you know what i mean at the time i wasn't working i was so busy partying hanging out with my older girlfriend neat i ain't, i wasn't being responsible i was not um sticking with my plans and sticking with my goals and it was actually causing a rift between me and my father so uh he ended up you know putting me out and of course i was staying the night a lot with nita already so she was like girl it's all good you can come stay with me don't even you know what i mean sweaty because again i had the car she had the apartment so it was a win-win okay supposedly um so i moved in with her and this is when 
things really went to spiral and I really got to see what what type of female I was up against. Um, and basically, over time, um, you know, it started off okay, was taking turns cooking for her kids and stuff, little stuff like that. Um, you know, I got used to her with her male company coming and going, whatever, you know. And um, a lot of things started unfolding. A couple of situations uh, came about that revealed to me how much this woman um, really did not have a liking for me like I thought she did. So it start one incident I can recall, and I'm going to be speaking several incidents because I can't keep up with the order, y'all. This was back in 1999 when I graduated high school, so I can't tell you exactly the each sequence of each situation, but I'm going to try to recall it to the best of my ability. So I remember there was one situation in which um um. We call ourselves, um, cause we live, we lived in the area, we lived in the area in which, uh, there was a lot of interracial relationships going on. A lot of the brothers in that area really preferred to be with white females. You know what I mean? That, that just was the way that town was. Um, this was Norwich, Connecticut, you know, so it was very much like interracial based. You know, that's all you saw a lot of black guys with white women and stuff. So, um, the, as close as you can get to finding a, a, a black male um, to be interested in you, um, it was mostly military guys. You know, we, we, we stayed near a naval base area. It was, it was a high populated um, military base, military area. So a lot of the black guys that I would meet was in the Navy, in the military at the time. So most of them were from, some of them were from the South where all they knew was white, black women, you know? So they didn't have this interracial thing as heavily as the guys in Connecticut did. So most of the time when we would go out, we would always go to the club on post, meet guys there and link up with them, go have drinks with them, go out and party with them and stuff like that. So. Also, Anita, oh shoot, I said her name. Well, Anita, she, uh, she, she actually, you know, like I said, she, she had already been ran through in her, um, area in her neighborhood because she went to school there. She grew up there. She got a lot of family there. So she was too well known. So her meeting military guys was an escape goat from her because none of them really knew her history. None of them really knew how she was and stuff like, or knew her reputation. So she would kind of pick up on guys like that. That that's the reason why she rather she got into dating military guys because they didn't know her history, like the guys in her neighborhood or the guys she went to school with or whatever. So went out to the club one night, and of course, uh, club on post because I was the only club that was jumping off or whatever, other than the clubs in New Haven. So we went on posts and stuff and met some guys and um, what ended up happening was because she had a tendency to date guys younger than her. She was 27 at the time. So she would pick up guys like my age, like 19, 20. And some instances she would get guys her age, but I know that she would pick up young guys too. So this particular night she met a young guy. Um, they exchanged phone numbers and stuff like that. And again, I know that she was very attention seeking. And it was like this all the time in the club. Um, she, it seemed like she was always like on a dick prowl, looking for somebody, you know, looking for anybody. It, it, it just seemed like that was um, always her mission every time we went out. Like, uh, what guy could dick me down tonight? Or, or, or what guy, you know, could I get some dick and dollars out of? That, that just seemed to always be her um general every time we went out so she met these young this young guy um they ironically i don't think she smashed him right away she ended up smashing him eventually but uh they were talking they vibed everything was going cool I, i'm like okay well maybe this may be one she might stick with he would come over sometimes she'll cook him dinner sometimes whatever whatever so 
at the time, I didn't have anybody. And um, he had friends, because you know how these military guys are, they travel in packs. Well, I got a friend, and she got, you know. So she was like, yeah, um, so-and-so, we want to go to skating rink, and he bringing his friend with him. So, you know, I don't want to be awkward, you know. So I'm like, okay, cool, we friends, why not? So we go to the skating rink, meet her male friend, and um, I meet her, uh, I meet her male friend, friend, and all four of us out having a good time. Me and the guy, we hit it off pretty well or whatever and we was talking and vibing and what ended up happening for some strange reason her and the guy did not work out and the only thing I could guess was she smashed him and he lost interest keep in mind he younger than her so you know young and military you already know you know what I mean ain't too much was gonna go far with that but anyway her and the guy stopped talking okay they wasn't dealing with each other no more. I can't remember the exact reasons why. Me and his friend was still vibing, okay? Matter of fact, after her and her and, and, and dude stopped vibing, me and the other guy, we still went out. Like, shit, we ain't got nothing to do with that. Matter of fact, I, I linked up with him on my own without her uh, like a week or so later. We were still talking. Ain't no sex or nothing went down. We just kicked it. We just like being in each other's company. We had a good time. And somehow she found out about me and the guy still talking. Don't y'all know this helper got mad? And her response was, I should have made sure my stuff was straight before I hooked you up and got and, 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 uh, and, 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 um, and connected you with dude i should have made sure you know i had established myself first i i don't think she said those exact type of words but i knew that's what she meant so that was a major red flag um right there of okay uh how are you gonna introduce me to somebody and because me and his friend got hitting it off and you and the other guy didn't she got mad about that See, this, this, is, this is little stuff that women, we don't pay attention to when it comes to this friendship. When your friends start getting mad because certain things work out. Now, even though she invited you and it works out for you and not her, this is a red flag. No different than you might have a friend that may put you on with her job because she knows you need a job. You get on that job and it end up promoting you within two, three months and she done been there two, three years. You think that's not going to make her feel some type of way? So... Keep in mind that just because a female uh, uh, invites you to something, that don't mean, you know what I'm saying, she invited you because she really wanted you to do well. She might have invited you because it was convenient for at the time. She didn't want to be by herself or she didn't know what to expect so she brought you along for the ride. Um, females do that. And the moment you see a female starts acting funny because she put you on to something and it's working out for you and not her. And you know you genuinely didn't do nothing shady to make that happen. I could see if I was bad mouthing her to to the guy and then the guy went back and related. Then that's some sucker, sh sucker shit. You know what I'm saying? But she got mad about that. And something happened, I don't know, but the guy didn't feel comfortable talking to me anymore. So, I don't know if she said something to his friend, like, how he gonna sit up here and still talk to my friend, and me and you ain't even click. Like, I don't know what happened, but I wasn't crazy about the guy like that, so I didn't really see it as a loss. But I knew she had something to do with it. So, that's just something to consider. Uh, just because if a female puts you on... And her character or her demeanor starts acting different. Uh, that's a red flag. Um, had another issue. This was a separate situation. Um, this situation was... Uh, we met a different group of guys. Okay? Again, from the military post. Because that's what as close as you was going to get to a real... To, to black men was dating military guys. And... I don't even recommend nobody dating military guys. Them, they, they, them guys, oh my gosh. They be having wives and damn babies in every goddamn state. I just stay away from their ass. I look at, at military men as coronaviruses. I stay the hell away from them. I social distance from their asses. But no disrespect to the veterans. 
but I would never want to be none of y'all women, women, none of that. Anyway, so again, she met this decent guy, and um, he was in the Navy too. And uh, the only difference was this guy was older. Well, kind of like around her age, he seemed more mature than the last one, okay? So, him and her talked for a while, and uh, of course, he had a friend, <laughs> and I talked to the friend. Now, I'm 19, the friend is probably about 30, 31, something like that. A little too old for me, but uh, we just talked or whatever. So, what happened was, her and this guy started getting a little serious, and I thought this particular round, I said, okay, maybe she finally met somebody decent. You know, he is her age. He seems more mature, stuff like that. So, as they begin to build this relationship over time, um, I met him. He would come over. And a couple of times, he when he would invite her to dinner, he'd invite both of us. And it wasn't because he was trying to like you know try me or anything like that you can just tell his maturity level was a lot different you know like, hell i'll take you and your friend out you know y'all yeah let's let's go you know and um i had the car at the time so i would pick up pick him and his friend up we go to a buffet eat whatever and i noticed um when was at the buffet he brought her rolls and me a rolls i'm like okay you know he vibing he okay he he, he straight he on point whatever and um his friend, on the other hand, you could tell he was cool, but he was a playboy. I just tell he was all about just trying to get some action. He wasn't, you know what I mean? Uh, so anyway, her and me and me and the guy, we knew we, we wasn't like clicking on that level, but we was being chill out of respect for both of them since they were clicking pretty well. So they decides uh, one night for us to go to the club they don't know the area and need, need trust you know she knows the area she knows all the clubs and stuff so she tells him what club she's going to be at and that they can meet her they can meet us over there and i know she kept trying to kind of try trying to like push me on to being with his friend but i'm like me and dude ain't clicking like that you know for whatever reason she kept trying to push me in the being with his friend or what I don't I really can't understand to this day what was the purpose of that but nevertheless we went to the club club car Cardinals and New Haven Connecticut y'all to my Connecticut folks out there so uh we met at the club and uh her cousin was with us it was like a like a couple of us me her cousin her other friend whatever it was like four females whatever and her man at the time his homeboy you know and whatever so anyway we in the club vibe is good she's sitting on her man lap you could tell they kicking it they vibing it and at this point she's so used to being I, I i don't like females that are like this but one thing about women that are very promiscuous when they finally do get a man that's dumb enough to take them seriously they kind of start showing their ass a little bit and that's kind of what she was doing you know um, being all over him and you know he was embracing it he was taking it all in like he was enjoying every moment of it and in the back of my mind I'm like dude you just don't know honey she been touched more than the last loaf of slice of bread you know what I mean and a loaf you know everybody done touched it but nobody don't want it but okay dude do you whatever so um, they having a good time they kicking it they chilling and him or her they decide to get on the dance floor they dance having a good time and me and his friend sitting there talking, but I could tell his friend felt like I was, you know, cock blocking because he wanted to talk to other females there. You know, we wasn't together. And like I said, um, his friend was way much older than me, and I could tell he was running game. And I and for some strange reason, I noticed his friend did not like my friend. His friend did not like her. I could just tell the way he would look at her. You know, sometimes like like you got females where we can be a, friends with certain females and you just don't like her man. You know he full of shit. You know he full of crap. You just get this vibe like this dude is just no good and she's crazy about this clown. That's the kind of vibe he got. Like I know this broad ain't nothing, man. She garbage and my my boy sprung over. I could tell that's the kind of vibe he had. So the club was getting hot and. I just, uh, you know, I noticed it was a crowd of people. Like, there was, like, a couple on a dance floor. Must They getting it in, and they cheering them on, rooting them on. Like, go, go, yeah, go, yeah. You know, all of that. 
And mind you, I'm short. I'm five foot. So I can't see what the hell is going on. You know what I mean? It's hot as hell. So I walk outside the club. Because I'm like, I, I, I'm going to just go outside. I need some air. It's hot in here. It's crowded. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of black people, we draw heat when we in a set. It's too many of us in one place. So I go outside where it's nice and cool. And I'm just chilling. So I see Nita's man coming outside. And I'm like, what the hell he doing out here instead of being with her? You know, so uh, he's pissed. He's upset. Like he wants to hurt somebody. Like somebody just pissed him off. You know, so um, I'm totally lost in the sauce. I have no clue. So I walk over to him. I said, what's going on? Well, I'm going to just say, uh, I'm going to just call him Greg. Greg, what's going on? Why are you out here instead of being in there? And he like, man, fuck that. I don't want to fucking talk about it. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. Da, da. So he's getting all like frustrated and aggravated. He, I could tell he wasn't being disrespectful to me, but he was mad. He was just talking out of anger. And I know it wasn't directly meant towards me. So anyway, I said, what's going on, man? What's going on? I had to get it out of him. He said, man, I can't believe she stood up there and did that to me. I said, what did she do? She up here on the dance floor, dancing with some nigga. He got his hands all on her behind. He lifted her all up in the air and doing this and that, disrespecting me. We supposed to be out here together. I said, oh my goodness. I, and one thing about a hoish woman, <laughs> she cannot hold it down. Even when she meets a good guy, even when she meets a nice guy, the, 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 the Jezebel spell gonna come out, okay? If she's a thought, she, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. And sure enough, and she had been drinking. Because mind you, she drinks a lot. Okay? So when she drinks, she gets very loose. And she's very combative. She's a lot when she gets drunk. I, I recommend that's another lesson. Do not be friends with a female that constantly drinks. I'm telling you. Because you see the worst in them when they get their drink on. They start saying all kind of foul stuff to you which i'm getting ready to tell y'all now the story gets more interesting and uh, but 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 it tell you know nothing nothing more honest than a drunk an angry person and a child okay them three things gonna be brutally honest so he's upset about nita being on a dance floor letting some man inappropriately dance with her like he was not there like he did not exist and I'm like, wow, Nita. I mean, really? Now you finally got somebody that's, you know, gullible enough, you know what I'm saying, to deal with you. And you're going to sit up here and uh, disrespect this guy. We invited them out to this club. This was supposed to be time for you and him to be together. You're on a dance floor freaking some dude. So that's the reason why the whole crowd was around, you know, because you letting this guy toss your ass like a salad and, and, and just you know, uh, um, dance with you inappropriately on the dance floor and stuff. So, anyway, his male friend comes out. The one who I said who already act like he don't like her. He comes out, man, I told you she was a whole man. I told you, man, I told you she wasn't no good. And just like I thought, I said, okay, so he already had a notion about her, which is the reason why he just didn't like her. And she didn't like him. They just didn't click. And said, man, that's messed up, man. You know, his own boy amping him up man i told you she was oh i told you she wasn't nothing i told you this this and that so my uh her cousin comes out i guess she's noticing they're not there cousin comes out trying to talk him down and trying to like you know defend nita in a sense oh she's drunk she don't know what she's doing don't take a personal history from like man that's some bullshit man she a grown woman she know what the hell she doing so between the both of them you know what i mean and he basically said that um i'm not i'm done with her i'm done the guy was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm out. So him and his friend, they get in their car and they leave or whatever. She comes out the club and she comes out the club and, and you could tell reality don't hit her even though she's still a little tipsy that you just disrespected your man. You embarrassed him. And I told her, I said, look, I don't know. I'm just telling you. He said he done. So uh, he said what? And, he, and let me tell you. I remember the story clearly. She said, oh, you just couldn't wait to tell me that, huh? You glad he done with me, huh? 
because you ain't wanted us to be together anyway. Now, mind you, she drunk, but at the same token, I'm like, are you serious? You think I'm really? Pay attention to, listen, ladies, pay attention to that dirty undercover shade. When the female says, oh, you don't want me with nobody. You don't want me having nothing. You want to be the only one to have something. Let me tell you, red goddamn flag. Red flag, okay? So she was mad with me when I was basically relaying the message to her. But he told me. Because in her mind, oh, we going to get together. We going to be together. I ain't worried about him, this and that. So anyway, the guy that she was on the floor letting freak her dance with her inappropriately he comes out come to find out the guy is a stripper that's why he was lifting her up like a damn tonka truck and doing all this other shit because she she very petite probably couldn't have been no more than 110 120 or whatever and um you know um the guy was like man i ain't meant no harm we just having a good time well damn if he gonna get mad like that he's soft you might don't need to be with a man like that anyway and in the back of my mind I'm like dude that's i didn't say it, but i'm like that's not your place that man his own man he felt disrespected. You cannot tell a person when and when they should feel disrespected and when they shouldn't. I'm like, dude, that's not even your place. You get what I'm saying? So I'm thinking this dude trying to like, you know, um, he he's rubbing it in. Uh, you know, he he he's getting some fun out of trying to make her guy look soft and make himself look like a stand-up dude and of course he had his one or two little homeboys were like yeah man that's some sucker shit man and you can tell she's trying to hold it down but she's embarrassed she already done took it out on me or whatever you know her cousin was like man you know neat you doing too much whatever man you embarrassed that man he'll but don't worry about it he's mad right now he'll calm down give him some time and in my mind the way dude was acting i ain't felt like she could recover from that so my opinion to her was i don't think you're gonna be able to recover from that because this man came outside all mad and all angry and this this and that so anyway we get in the car she calls him and whoop de woo they go back and forth or whatever whatever and um uh, we get back home and i guess the next day oh before that um we get in the car and at this point, you know, uh, this pretty much dampened the rest of the evening because her dude done left. Um, she's embarrassed. And the fact that she threw some shade at me, you know, this done put a damping on the rest of the night, you know. So, mind you, she's on the passenger side. She's still, you know, um, talking out her head, but she's being transparent. And that's when she decides to say, well... Um, I forgot how the conversation took place, but we ended up talking about the guy. And I said, I really don't think, you know, I really don't think that guy going to let that go. You know what I mean? I mean, I, he seemed really upset. And I guess because I was not um, saying what you wanted to hear, I wouldn't say, well, girl, that's all right, girl. He'll be back, girl. It don't matter if you was freaking another nigga on the dance floor. That nigga, you still got him, boo. He, you, he'll be all right. I wouldn't co-sign so to her I'm looking like a hater. And that's another thing. Don't be friends with a female when just because you have a difference in opinion, she automatically think you hating on her. Because that means they don't respect your level of intelligence. Because why a bitch got to be hating on you because I have a difference in opinion? That means you think that less of me. You don't think I'm intelligent enough to have my own opinion. Don't roll with females like that. So, um... Once she's once she made that statement, I knew right then that um th this was an underlying issue she already had with me, and even though she was drunk, like I said, liquor courage, um it just liquor doesn't mean you don't know what you're saying. It just means that you're bold enough to say what you've been feeling. You feel me? So what ended up happening was um I remember we uh went back to on, on the way going back now mind you i'm living where i'm staying with her i'm pleading for our friendship because i'm in a vulnerable place i live with her i can't go back to my dad because i done burnt bridges with him you know what i'm saying so i'm finding myself apologizing to her because i really want to keep the peace and this is another red flag if you got to keep apologizing to a bitch to bring them down you don't need to be friends with them you if you got to keep 
being a bigger person all the time, they never apologize. You the one doing all the apologizing, you know, um, because I put myself in a vulnerable position. And that's why I can understand exactly what Shanquilla was going through because she was in a vulnerable position because when people hate you, you become a threat. So they were smart enough. They waited when they got her in a whole nother country. This woman was a businesswoman, which means she had a lot of friends, she had a lot of family that supported her and loved the hell out of her. So they wait and got her somewhere where she, they knew she would be at their mercy because that's what happened to the girl that I female that I was dealing with. She knew my situation in and out. She knew I could not go back to my dad, but what she didn't know was me and my mom was still like that. Me and my mama talked all the time. And everything I was telling my mother, my mama was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I ain't feeling this bitch. I ain't feeling I ain't feeling her. I still stay close to my mom. So I wasn't so gullible to the point to where I did not still listen to what somebody else had to say. You know, even though me and my dad wasn't on good terms, I kept up with my mom. And my mom was calling everything I said. My mom kept calling out like this, uh-uh, this bitch, no, you don't want it with her. I don't feel, I don't, I'm not feeling good vibes from this female. I, I don't, I don't think she's for you like that. Everything I was telling my mom, my mom was like on it. Like, I really wish you would make peace with your father, get from up under her. This is going to continue us to get, keep getting worse. But this is what these females do. A lot of them, they wait till you get on their turf. They wait because they hate you that much. And because you're that much of a threat, they wait till you are in a vulnerable place. It's like being a mouse in a pit full of snakes. There's no one there to pull you out, rescue you, and they know it. And that's what happened with Shanquilla Robinson. They waited till they got in a whole nother country. They waited till this girl was booney butt naked. They, wait, they, they, they decided to strike at her most vulnerable moment. And that's why she was not fighting back. And I get it. I get it because I found myself pleading with the female that was doing me in. Because I was vulnerable. I had nowhere to go. No one was there to intervene and intercede. And I did not want to have to go back to my dad. And she knew me and my dad wasn't getting along. And not only that, when you genuinely love a friend, you want to try to see the good in them. You want to try to work it out. That's why that girl didn't want to fight back. She didn't. Not because she was weak. Not because she wasn't uh, 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 um, um, being a woman. But for one, she was in disbelief that my friend's really doing this to me. And when you want to see the good in people, you don't see the venom that they are spitting out on you. You don't see it. And they knew she was at a vulnerable place. They wouldn't have did that if she was at her business. They wouldn't have did that if she was in her city with her family, where she was loved and respected. They waited till this girl got somewhere where they knew no one was going to come to her defense. And when and, and that's the thing. Never put yourself at the mercy of a, of another female, y'all. Don't, ladies, don't go staying with no female. Don't go traveling with them and they family and they friends and you by yourself. Nah, you can't. You cannot do that. They waiting for they they once they get you on their turf, and their turf does not exactly have to be their home or their address. Their turf could be you're somewhere with they family and they friends and they and no one is there that you know. You taking a major chance doing that. You taking a major major chance doing that, um, and, and that's what happened. I find myself pleading um, because uh, I was depending on her in a sense, and it's more than one way to depend on a female. Uh, you could depend on them for advice. You could depend on them just the fact that you know y'all y'all have to uh, you know uh, do favors for each other. Don't let whatever it is you depending on them for. Make you plead and negotiate with them because you negotiating with the goddamn terrorists. That's what you're doing. And that's what I did. So I called myself apologizing to her about something I couldn't help, which was my complexion. And I and I'm, I hate to say this. I hate to say this. And I know all dark-skinned women are like, uh, not like this. My best friend that passed in 2015, dark-skinned, but I had the heart of an angel. She was my road dog. She was sweet to me. There was never no bad vibes, never no jealousy, never no animosity. That was my girl. And she was everything to me. But for the most part, I'm going to be frank. Most females I've had problems with has been dark skin. Now, all females, we've all, we all got that specific group of females who just don't bubble with. 
Some females just don't bubble with plus size females. Plus size women just love to like target them. Some women don't bubble with uh project bitches. You know, it's just won't always be that certain caliber of women that you don't vibe with. And I noticed for me, it's always been darker toned women who flip out on me. They show me a whole nother personality. Um, I, I've had too many encounters. It'd be different if this was like one time, all the females I ever had issues with was darker than me. And, and, I, and no pun intended, no shade, you know, and this hasn't changed my perception on dark skinned women where I don't F with dark skinned women. I don't deal, you know, cause light skinned women are shady too. Okay, a shady female is a shady female, but I promise you, it has happened to me too many times, y'all. I'm like, for real, for real. Every female I've ever bumped heads with, she was darker than me. It was dark-skinned women. I promise you, every female that's been a problem in my life, she been darker than me. Okay? So, again, as I say, changed my perception, but um, um, you just, you, you as a woman, you know... Um, when you have had the same issue far too many times, you can't even ignore it. You, you know, this is something that you are going to be up against eventually. And I kind of, you know, she was my real major first bad experience as far as with a darker skinned woman. Not only that, she was older than me. And sometimes women, young women, you get older women who hate on you a lot because you got a chance to do live your life we live you you live in your youth they don't they can't go back she was a mother um she had children single mom you know what i mean and a couple of times she had said things you got to pay attention to things she said you know um when she would get drunk and she would be his parents that's why i don't i don't deal with alcoholic females you know um who don't have no control over their liquor and she would say stuff like you a good girl, you know, you ain't been out here like I've been out here. I done did it all, you know what I mean? She had her moments when she wanted to lift me up, and she had her moments when she wanted to tear me down. And the tear me down moments outweighed the building me up moments. And as a woman, that's the shit you got to pay attention to. You can't overlook that. You can't just figure, oh, well, she complimented me two times, but if she threw shade 20 times over the two times, that's something you need to think about. Like I said, you got to pay attention to the, to, to the little red flags. The main things they be complimenting you about, they be hating you on. Like I said, she had her moments where she would build me up and like, yeah, you, you know, you a good girl, you this, you that, you know what I mean? You ain't been out here like I've been out here, you know, little stuff like that. You know, it seemed harmless, but trust and believe, they ain't saying it just to be saying it. It's the reason they saying that, you know? So, um... Uh, you know, uh, I just, like I stated, uh, I just started seeing more and more things of her um, that really made me be very cautious of her. And um, as the friendship continued, uh, again, she became more and more comfortable. And again, when you allow disrespect, um, it escalates. You know, it starts off small and then it gradually it builds it gets more and more out of hand so um uh she begins i, I started seeing s slow signs of narcissism and she was becoming a little bit more on the psychotic side um i would see how she would throw tantrums and hit the wall when she wasn't getting her way um and i think what ended up happening was um me staying with her she saw that I had a certain level of freedom that she did not have and it made her annoyed like a female could like you but she more damn annoyed with you than she is liking you like she likes your personality she like you therefore but at the same time she's annoyed by the fact that you have opportunities that she know has passed her by and stuff like that so um you know there's some good teaching i'm giving y'all i'm hoping i get at least one cash app out of this <laughs> uh but nevertheless at least a thumb up please um so I, I just started kind of um noticing that i forgot i had a good point that i was going to make um but 
my my youth, it, it was certain things about me which began to annoy her. And sometimes your success become feel, makes them start to hop, start to focus on their failures. Sometimes your success has a way of making a person really notice their own failures. And um what what happened over time um more and more situations came about where i started seeing her for who she really was and i think a part of her she wanted me around but she did it it was like a toxic ass you know relationship like i want you here because i can use you for your car use you for what you got but at the same time i don't want you here you know because I know there's things you you're privileged to be able to able to do that I'm not going to be able to do. I done been ran through. I done been with too many of these niggas. Everybody know my name, stuff like that. So again, you know, we were still going out to clubs like a toxic relationship, still hanging out with each other, knowing it, it's been too much disrespect that has occurred. It's been too many words, bad words that was exchanged, more so from her end because again I was at her mercy. So I was living with her and I burnt bridges with my parents. So uh, I, I find myself having to be overly humble more than I should have tolerated myself. So got to the point to where when a person starts disrespecting you, um, it become it becomes regular to where they don't even like they don't even think about it twice, you know, and that's what will happen, you know, and she was getting more and more disrespectful. Another situation came up where. It was my birthday. I never forget. And um, at the time, I would say a lot of I would say like a lot of karma came back on me because of how I treated my parents. Um, my car started started having problems. It broke down. You know, so many things happened where a red flag should have went off. Like, girl, just go home. Swallow your pride. Carry your ass home. No, I'm going. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Hell no. Nah car broke down so now you know we got to catch rides with other people and shit you know what i'm saying oh, what? so anyway called ourselves going to the club you know and her cousin was cool and i and, and you know what you pay attention to sometimes what people family say about them even though they may be like i don't f with my family or my family ain't no good pay attention to when they family start saying a little stuff about them and I remember a couple of times we went out to the club. Her cousin would little say little little slick stuff like, you know what, she'll pick getting all these phone numbers and watch not one of them niggas be worth a damn thing. You know, even her own cousin was noticing how, you know what I mean, how, how like attention-seeking she was, you know. So pay attention to little stuff like that when people be dropping a little line. Don't overlook it because it may be significant information. So we call ourselves going out. I really didn't have that much money again. My luck was getting worse. My karma was coming, catching up with me, not listening to my parents, not swallowing my pride, going back home to my dad, trying to make amends and, and, and um, you know, making peace with him so I can get my life back on track. So nevertheless, we went out for my birthday. I remember I only had like uh, six, seven dollars. And at the time, you know, she still had income, even though she didn't work as no more than I did. She was still getting child support, still getting, you know, getting her little side hustle money, whatever. So one night, uh, I think her cousin, her, her cousin, which was older than her and totally different from what she was. She said, man, we should go out for your night. We should go out for your birthday. You know, this, this and that. And I'm like, I really ain't got no money blah 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 and she was like you know uh i'm sure nita got you this this and that blah 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 so i'm not you know i ain't felt comfortable with nita paying my admission because she had already been showing her colors over and over and over and we just wasn't in a good place you know so um went to the club anyway it was like a jamaican club i remember and um we get there and when it's time for the admission and stuff i think the guy was like eight dollars or ten dollars and i think i only had like seven i was three dollars short do you not know she would not pay for it <laughs> she would not give me extra three dollars her cousin had to give me extra three dollars so i kind of uh already felt out of place then like i said when you let little disrespect go it escalates escalates and escalates 
And that's what, it was like a ball rolling down the hill. So we get in the club, um, you know, uh, her cousin was like, if you know, if you want me to order you something to eat, you know, because she ordered home stuff, something to eat. And her cousin got herself something to eat. She said, I got you. If you want something to eat, I got you. I said, no, I'm good. I'm fine. And that's what I, you know what I mean? Because I, I just don't like put myself in a position where somebody got to pay for my food and this, this and that. But again, this is my karma. Lost my car, lost my job. You know, not humbling myself to my parents. So what ended up happening was um, there was this older guy who was walking around the club. And I could tell he worked there. And um, I don't know if he, he spotted something or what. But he came by the table. And he was like, you know, he noticed my friends eating and I'm not eating. <laughs> and he was like, you know, why are you not getting yourself something to eat? It's the snap, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you know, I, I just, I, I forgot what I told him. I think I said I didn't have enough money, whatever I told him. He was like, well, you know, what you want to eat? I got you. I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, but um, somehow, some way, I, I, I told him it was my birthday or something. And I forgot what made me resort to tell him that. He was like, this your birthday. You should be enjoying yourself, man. I'll get you something to eat. What you want? It was a Jamaican restaurant. So I'm like, I would really like some oxtails and stuff, whatever. He said, yeah, I got you. This man brings me back a plate full of food, y'all. No kidding. So at this point, she's looking at me with the stank face. Like, you know, and her cousin was like, oh, gone, gone, so-and-so, gone, Jen, you know. You got you got a man who done sub there and pay for your food. You go, girl, this, this, and that. And um, the man was like, even if you, you, your friends, do they want something? At this point, Nita shakes her head because she's in her feelings. Acting like she don't want anything, even though the man offered. And stuff like that. And her cousin was like, no, I'm good. I'm good, you know. So um, the man even knows the DJ. Kind of find out he owns the place. I didn't even know he was the owner of the joint. And he even told the DJ the give me a happy birthday shout out which the birth which the dj did so i'm like wow it just made my evening so much better that this guy that was a total stranger paid for my food didn't do no 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 fuck boy stuff you know trying to hit on me and even when the night was over and the club shut down he walked us back to the car made sure we got there safely and all this was really irking her spirit because she was already miserable and she was trying to make me miserable, you know, and that's basically what it was. So at this point, the friendship is deterior deteriorating, especially once I lost my car. And um, that's how you know what kind of female friends you got, ladies. <laughs> lose your car, um, lose, lose your job, you know, lose something that they too were able to benefit from. Um, they don't have a purpose for you. <laughs> they don't have a purpose for you anymore. So, um, uh, we, we just, uh, again, it's been so long, but I remember we just kept getting into it over and over about all kinds of stuff. And, um, it got to the point to where I really realized it was time for me to go. It's time for me to leave because I was seeing too much narcissistic ways. Um, you know, she, she tried to control me. Um, knowing that I was in a vulnerable situation, she was basically trying to dog me. And the fact that she was miserable, she took a lot of her frustrations out on me and pretty much made me her emotional punching bag. She didn't physically assault me, but she would mentally and emotionally do it. Um, it's so many things that have occurred, but, um, I finally hit a breaking point and I forgot what was the last straw. But um it finally got I finally got to the point to where I realized I said this woman is basically shitting on me. Um she's mistreating me. She's being possessive and abusive and controlling um with her actions and she knows I don't have any place else to go. So um I found another friend at the time my, my Italian friend I'm gonna see if I can find her on Facebook um who I used to work with and I remember I had been in her apartment one time and I remember her being really sweet and being really kind and um when uh uh me and Anita you know uh when the friendship didn't work out I reached out to my Italian friend her name was Joy told her the situation 
I said, I couldn't afford to go back home. She says, well, you're welcome to come with me. You're welcome to come and stay here, you know. So I knew at this point I had to hurry up and get up out from up under her because um, it been too many things that had occurred. There, there was even in another incident in which when I was working at a club, I used to bartend there, and um, she, me and her had a disagreement and got into it over some he say, she say stuff. And she actually uh, had sent her male cousins to come there. And she said she had sent them to, she had told them to come to the club and basically harass me. But being that me and her had made up by then, she said, well, I'm going to go ahead and call them back and let them know not to harass you again. So see stuff like that, that I kept ignoring. Um, the fact that you was willing to send your people to my job to taunt me and harass me so I could lose my job. I shouldn't have given her a pass. I had given her a pass on multiple things because, again, I wanted to see the good in her. And, um, again, and I was relying on her at the same time. So when we finally reached that breaking point, um, I had the police escort me over there because I knew she was, she had already made threats. Um, she had already said she was not going to let me get my stuff back and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I think, think, yeah, this was the last incident, y'all. Now memory serves me correctly. Um, she was going through a very miserable point in her life. And I think I can remember this was like New Year's Day. And just a lot of stuff was not going right for her. You know, we all go through those periods of life where it's just that season where you just not winning. It's your losing season. It's just one issue after another. A lot of things have transpired. And it was easy for her to take it out on me because I felt like I was a child up, 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 up under her. Um, and she used it to her advantage, you know. Um, she took all her frustrations like misery likes company. So I'll never forget, this was one night she really wanted to go out, but we both was broke. We didn't have no money. Um, and we couldn't escape our miseries. We was broke. We didn't have the money to go to the club and drink it off or whatever. And I remember she called the male friend of hers. And, um, you know, like, hell with you. If you can't go out tonight, I don't give a damn. I'm fine. I'm getting out of this mother one way or another. That's how she was. She didn't look out for me. Um, either I had my own self or I'm just asked out. You know, I could give y'all several more scenarios she did, but I don't want to make the concert go into two, three hours. So, but this was the final incident I remember when I knew I needed to leave this toxic friendship. So, um, she was frustrated that night because the guy, one of her male friends that was supposed to pick her up and take out, he changed his mind. And, um, I remember her brother and his friend came by and, um, I remember the brother's friend, nice looking Puerto Rican guy, was trying to talk to me. Now, we was all in her living room. And, you know, he sits on the sofa beside me. You know, he's like, yeah, what's up, Ma? This, this, and that, blah, blah, blah. And you could tell he was giving me a lot of attention. And for whatever reason, it stirred her up to where I remember her laying on the sofa and taking her fist and just beating up against the wall. And I'm looking crazy, and the guy looking like, what the hell is going on? So she basically starts talking shit to me, trying to humiliate me in front of the guy. Um, trying to turn him off from being interested in me by, uh, I can't remember what she said, but I remember her trying to embarrass me. And even a guy looked at her like, damn, man, that's messed up. This is supposed to be your friend. Even he felt some type of way, but he couldn't say anything about it. It wasn't his place. So he saw the way he was, she was talking to me and the way she was handling me. And the guy was like, you know what? I wouldn't be able to deal with this. I don't know how you deal with her. He said, man, shit, you can come with me to my place. This is some bullshit right here. He was like, man, you need to get away from her. She, she just became like this possessed, obsessive, you know, uh, narcissistic. She just like started losing it on me more and more and more and it came a point where me pleading with her trying to calm her down it was not working and i think it got to the point to where we both started struggling we was hitting rock bottom and um it, it actually took a toll on the friendship 
But at the same token, um, she was really getting annoyed with my presence because she knew that no matter what problem she had, there was nothing I could do to deliver her from it. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the car. I didn't have the resources now. So at this point, she's looking at me like I'm dead weight. Knowing I'm, knowing I'm only 19 instead of her talking me like a woman, like, okay, we're going to work. We're going to live together. You got to work. We got to have my bills. I don't, I don't know where her issue was because from the very beginning, she told me she didn't need no money for bills. She didn't need anything. She had just like my company. She just, she ain't need nothing. She said, I got, I can take my own, kept my own bills. You got to do anything. Me being 19 years old, I should have knew better though. But, um, at this point she was not where she needed to be in life and her frustration, um, just kept leaking on me, spilling over on me. So even the guy is noticing it. And at this point, I'm like, you know what? I got to go now. And that's when I somehow, we didn't have no Facebook or none of that. I reached out to Joy. I remember I had her phone number. We used to work together on posts. And I explained to her what happened again. Didn't want to go back to my dad. And she was like, well, you can come stay with me. You know, this and that. So um, there was a lot of tension between me and Nita. And I knew going to her house to get my things was going to be a problem. Now, ironically, um, the guy who she was renting from, she was related to. He was like a cousin or something like that. And he was low-key crushing on me. But he was older and he wasn't my type or nothing like that. But him and Nita was really cool. So I noticed she was sending him to call me to try to get me to come to his crib and stuff like that. And I just ain't felt comfortable with it because I knew how close him or her was. And I felt like it was like a setup. You know what I mean? So... Um, I just didn't feel comfortable with it, you know, so, uh, what ended up happening was all of the tension that was going on between me and her, I had belongings that I had to get, so I called the police because I already knew she was on this, this raging hate campaign because, um, basically I was leaving, so the control she had over me, she knew it was done. She wasn't going to be able to torment me, dictate me anymore and she didn't know where i was going not on not not only that i forgot a big significant part how grimy she was um i did i was able to um um get my talk i forgot how the story went but i remembered she knew me and my dad wasn't getting along so i confided in her by letting her know me and my siblings we were all going to come come together and move back to Georgia with my mother because even they started having issues with my dad after I left. And it was like a lot of friction in the family, which we're totally in a wonderful place now. That was several years ago. But at the time, um, me and my dad beefing, it caused a lot of tension with my siblings. So I reached out to my mom. My mom didn't like the fact that my dad was being stubborn and, 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 and not reaching out to me or whatever the case was. So my mom had planned to get us all tickets so we could all just come back home because she didn't like the fact that my dad was being so stubborn he was leaving me in the streets um to be with a woman who she felt like i was unsafe with as a friend based on all the stuff i was telling her so before me and anita got on bad terms she knew this and the, because I decided to leave her and I wasn't going to be up under her spell anymore, she calls my father and lets him know what I was planning on doing. Okay? So, of course, this infuriated my father. Like, oh, no, you already left. Now you're trying to get your brothers and sister to, cope, to, 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 to be on your side where you're trying to take them with you. So, she she just really, like I said, she was doing a whole lot of low-down malicious stuff. But it ended up working out and it ended up all working out in my favor. You know, even though she tried to be very conniving. But that's another story. So, anyway, um, the police brought me on the premises and of course, while I'm there, she's yelling and talking all this SHIT because of course the police cannot arrest you for talking all kind of stuff. She's calling me a bum bitch, saying all this stuff. Bitch, you have to come stay with me. You ain't got nothing with your raggedy bras. You know, just saying all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm trying to get my things. Where's my bra? Where's my this? I'm going all through her stuff because she knows she can't put her hands on me. 
because the police is right there. So it's already aggravating her that I got the police right there while I'm getting all of my things right. Not only is she talking SHIT, her kids are. She even got her kids disrespecting me. The same kids that acted like they were so humble and so polite um, when I helped her buy some, some school supplies for them to go back to school. She even convinced her own children who was only like 10 or 11 at the time to disrespect me. I'm like, if you got a problem with me, that's between me and you. You don't need to get your kids involved in it, but I'm trying to help her get my shit and get out of here. So I'm making sure I have everything I need because I want no reason to come back to this bra's place at all. Get my clothes, get my pocketbooks, um, getting this, getting that, getting everything. And got all of my stuff. And before the officer leaves, he says, you sure? You got everything? You good? I say, yeah, I'm good. I'm going. So at this point, I leave. She's calling everybody, letting everybody know the, the low down bitch I am and how she saved me, how she did everything for me. Ain't telling people how she dogged me though, while she would call herself looking out for me. But at this point, I don't care. So I move in with my Italian friend um, who knew I was basically came with nothing and she really made me comfortable. She was an older woman too, but she wasn't on that ratchetness level, whatever. So we go to the grocery store, we get, you know, little groceries and stuff, lunch meat, anything to make me feel comfortable. And, um, I was only staying with her at the time because my mother was actually working on trying to get me to come back to Savannah to live with her. As I stated at this point, my mother's not feeling comfortable. So, um, with me staying with this female, because everything that I have shared with her and told her throughout the duration of me being in friendship and living with this female, uh, my mother just did not feel safe. You know, uh, you got the, uh, you got to respect the intuition of an older woman because especially your mother, mother's intuition will never lead you wrong. So I, uh, my mother really enforced me to get from up under her because it was just way too much and it was happening repeat, re repeat, re re repeatedly. <laughs> so um, I moved in with my friend Joy and, you know, we made it very clear to her that this was only until uh, temporary. We wasn't trying to burden her or anything. And I was actually very grateful um, that she took me into her home at the time when I was really at my most vulnerable moment. And um, what ended up happening was while I'm staying with Joy, um, at this point, my father decides to stop bucking the system. And he gets to a point and says, you know what, if they wanna go with, if they wanna go with their mother, let them just go, let them all go, you know. Um, Cause I've, I'm sure my siblings, they felt the effects of me not being there based on the fact me and my father wasn't getting along so they didn't want to be there either so she, what she tried to do to sabotage me um uh, it actually worked out you know because um my father was like you know what i'll i'll send them all to you because i'm right now i'm i'm i'm, I'm tired of it and you know i'm not going to try to you know what i mean you know push the issue if they feel they're going to do better with you and they don't want to buy by my rules then you know my father he didn't buck you know he he actually purchased all our tickets so it took her ratting me out to actually it worked out in my favor because i didn't have to sneak and go behind my father's back she told him and um instead of me sneaking he went ahead and he he you know he complied you know, and he actually purchased the tickets and said, if you want to be with your mother, you ain't got to sneak and do it. I'll make sure you get there. So what she tried to do to destroy me actually helped me. So we already had a date. We already knew when I was leaving and my siblings, we all, uh, my dad purchased all, so purchased all of us a ticket. He said what date, he let me know what date the flight was going to be. And Joy said that she would make sure she met, brought me to the airport so I could be with my siblings and we all could set, catch the same flight together and go back to my mother and stuff. So I basically was just staying with Joy for like another week or so uh, until we caught the same flight and went back home to my mom because my mom just did not feel safe with me being in Connecticut 
anymore because there was just way too much red flag shit and her my mom's exact words to me i never forget she said you need to come from up under that lady i feel like that girl gonna try to set you up to get killed true story i'm not making this up this is what my mother told me this girl gonna try to hurt you i don't feel safe with you there and i took heed and i followed suit okay so sure enough i'm staying with joy until i get you know till uh we catch our flight or whatever and trying to make myself as comfortable as i can we get this funny knock at the door and we like what the hell you know going on and sure enough her same cousin peep this y'all her same cousin who she was renting her section a apartment from how about he knocks on the door and asks us joy if i'm staying with her And Joy was like, no, no one stays here with me. I stay by myself. And I can tell it was him because I know his voice. He's J Jamaican. So, you know, Jamaicans have that distinctive accent. He says, oh, I know she's here. And he leaves. And I knew right then because, again, she knew a lot of niggas. She had a lot of family. This her hometown. That's why don't go on no other bitch turf who don't like you or you get funny vibes about. Okay? So anyway, somehow, some way, um, I was able to safely get to the airport. Um, me and my father, we're not on good terms at this point, but his wife is there. You know, she's upset with me. I can tell look on their face. They feel like I'm the cause of how all of this is playing out and um being a rebellious 19 year old at the time I, I pretty much played a major part in it and i had a major influence over my siblings because i was the oldest since i was not going to be there they didn't want to be there <laughs> so um i remember uh you know we got on the flight and i felt so at peace because i knew i was no longer in that girl's hometown and she could no longer be a threat to me she could no longer bring any harm to me i knew i was finally at peace and um i found out i guess a couple of months or so later through mutual friends that she was trying to find me she was trying to find me um prior before that um i had people mutual friends of hers who kept trying to get me to come to where they were kept wanting me to hang out with them i'm like these are her mutual friends why the hell they want to hang out with me you get what i'm saying so even being as young as i was uh i went on my female intuition which is which is something a lot of women have to learn how, how to start doing don't ignore it don't disregard it don't only use your womanly intuition when it comes to men learn how to use it when it comes to women as well because sure enough um i felt like she wanted to go out with a bang i felt like she knew i was leaving and she already was miserable and she felt like i was getting ready to escape from the misery that she knew she was going to be confined to because she'd been talking about moving she'd been wanting to leave her hometown and do a new and, and, and do a fresh start in a whole nother city and it just never planned out like that for her so to her it was looking like okay i got a chance to get away and here it is she's stuck you know what i mean so anyway um my mom duffy did not steer me wrong i'm grateful for her um having that third eye because this I found out later she really was trying to come after me. Now, I did not know if she was trying to come after me to physically fight me or trying to come after me to actually, you know, pow pow me. I don't know, but the grace of God intervened and got me out of there just in time. So, um, nevertheless, I know this has been a long story, but there's so much lessons we can learn. And this is the reason why, y'all, I embrace isolation. I'm not one of those people. Y'all notice I don't have a panel full of people. I love me. I love my isolation. I don't need company. I don't need an entourage to feel comfortable, to feel whole. I embrace my peace because I've gone through so much with people. And I realize that my peace is more important than popularity. 
peace is priceless. And a person who truly embraces peace, they don't feel the need to be around a bunch of people. When you put yourself in a situation where you're constantly around uh, amongst the company of other people, chaos is going to come one way or another, whether you cause it or not. Um, you cannot control the actions of people. And see, some of us, we are so used to being around people that we, 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 when we do get peace, we don't know how to embrace it. So used to being in chaos, when you don't have chaos, you don't know how to embrace it. And this is the reason why when you're in a situation where you're, you're encountering fuckery, you don't know how to avoid it or to escape it because it has become your norm or either you don't see nothing wrong with it because you're so used to people being chaotic. You're so used to people stirring up strife in your life that you don't know how to embrace um, just being alone sometimes. Um, and uh, I, I think it's normal for women to want friendship. I think it's a beautiful thing. I do have a couple of females who I do rock with to this day. We all good to each other. No bad vibes. But I've gotten to a place to where I enjoy isolation more than friendship. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind getting a drink here and there. Um, but I'm just not in the business of having to have friends or having to have people around me to to, to make to constantly entertain me, um, to constantly make me feel um, like I have some type of relevance, you know, I, I love being by myself. I'm starting to notice more and more when I ask females, do you got anywhere, girl? I don't have no friends like that. It's a lot of females that's on a, I don't have any friends like that, especially those of us who are in our forties and, you know, getting older. We out of that sister girl thing. You got a couple of these older women who got these besties and stuff and, and wonder why they falling out. They getting into it. You grown women, you both have gone through so much in life. It don't take much for either one of you to get an offense filter because both of you have encountered a lot. And I tell my daughter the same thing. You cannot take all of these females wholeheartedly. You cannot take them to heart. Just because y'all got a few things in common. Just because y'all both been betrayed by the same people. Or y'all got a common enemy. It does not mean y'all automatically are supposed to build a friendship. Shanquilla, um, I don't think her story is none of uh, a, none of it aligns with what, what, what I've gone through personally, but I can say that um, where what, what we do have in common is that um, we tend to be very trusting, and I think that is a bad character trait that a lot of women need to start working on is being overly trusty. Just because you and the female can vibe, y'all got a few things in common. And I, again, and a lot of people have been saying this, and I agree. It this wasn't something that just happened. She, I'm sure Shanquilla Ben saw shade. Ben saw red flags. They been saying stuff out of pocket. But, you know, because she was in such a, a great place, she just didn't let it affect her. The girl had her own business. She was doing her own thing. She noticed a lot of shade, but it probably went in one end or the other like, that ain't, bitch ain't gonna kill my vibe. I'm still making my bread. Still got my own business. She probably was one of them females that thought like that. Like, shit, man, I'm good. I, I ain't worried about that little shade. But that little shade that you ignore, that you disregard, is the very shade that they are holding hostage. And they waiting for the moment for you to fail them. These females out here are waiting for the moment. They're, they're opportunists. They're waiting for the opportunity for you to be vulnerable. While you done sit up here and you done let things go and you let bygones be bygones, they still hold it, they still harbor that hate for you in their heart. Sitting at your table, eating your food, driving in your car, going to the clubs with you and all that, and hating you. This is why I love being alone, honey. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not mad that I don't have a panel full of people. I'm not mad that I don't have all kinds of people emailing me. What's up, Mocha? When can we hang out? I'm not mad about the people who walked out my life. I feel like um, rejection is protection, honey. If you rejected me, that's God's way of protecting me and covering me from the potential demonic bullshit you had in store for me anyway. And a lot of y'all got to realize every friendship that doesn't work out is not a loss. It is a lesson. Learn to love your own company. Learn to be your own best friend. Pay attention to the red signs, the red flags, the undercover hating, the little shade. The, she acting different when she get around niggas. She acting different when she get around other females.
criticizing anything positive. Letting one misunderstanding totally make her uh, uh, act a totally different way because there's a small misunderstanding. Listen, one small misunderstanding can really show you a person's true colors. A small disagreement. Oh, they getting possessive of you because you ain't talked to them for two, three days. They thinking you acting funny. All oh, is carrying on. And, and let me see, tell you something. If there is an incident that comes up and you and that person ain't friends no more, or oh, they took that situation and ran with it, that was never a friend. That was an enemy from day one. They were just waiting for an opportunity, waiting for something to go wrong so they can use that to their advantage. And that's why I love being my own best friend, being in my own company. Listen, when I'm not blogging y'all, a lot of days when I'm not uploading, it's not because I'm busy. Let me tell y'all, a lot of times I be home, I just be chilling, drinking my wine, taking my walks, reading my novels. It ain't always because I'm on vacation. I got a house full of company. Or I got girlfriends hanging out with me. I love being with me. I love being with me. I don't mind a little entertainment, a little fuckery here and there. But for the most part, I enjoy being by myself. When you get funny vibes, don't be trying to push the issue. Well, I know she really don't care for me, but I'm going to go to this party anyway. I don't like her homegirl, but shit, that's just her. I'm going to still go to this party. Don't force yourself to be around people who already show you they got a disliking for you. Because you don't know how that person is able to influence a person who acts like they like you and have so much love for you. Demons come together and they can influence each other, do all kind of things. All them demons in Mexico got together. No one was there to step in and intervene and say, y'all, this ain't worth it. This ain't worth going to prison for. This ain't worth, you know, her losing her life and we got to answer to her family. They not understanding when all this goes down, listen, all of y'all that was in on this together, y'all not going to be together. They're going to send all y'all to different prisons. Y'all will never see each other again. That was y'all first vacation and last vacation. And I really hope this young lady gets all the justice she deserves. But y'all, this is my segment of, um, uh, of, of uh, tales from the female incels. <laughs> uh, you know, t tales of the you know, tales of the um, narcissistic black female. It's a lot of them narcissistic as hell, waiting for you to offend them so they can have a reason to attack you. Waiting for you to get out of pocket with them. Waiting for you to disagree with them. And as soon as you do, they're going to empty their whole clip. Not only that, they're going to recruit a hating campaign they're going to get all kind of people involved to come up against you because a lot of these hoes are weak. It's strength in numbers. A lot of them don't want to come for you by themselves. They got to bring other people in because most of them are cowards. They, not, they, they, they are so threatened by your intelligence, by your level of success. They're not confident in coming up against you alone. They got to bring other incompetent hoes with them. They got what what they say, uh, wolves traveling packs. You got a lot of these female wolves, yo. Straight wolves in sheep's clothing. Don't fall for the game. Again, rest in peace to Shan Quill Robinson. Pray that she gets peace. Um, all of her, all of her, uh, you know, these friends of hers, which I don't call friends. These beasts that's running around now. I heard one of them is hiding. They not answering their phones. All of them done shut down their Facebook page, Twitter accounts. It's so funny how they were so bold in attacking this girl. But now that it's time to pay the price. Now that it's time to stand up like a man and a woman and answer to your actions. They cowered in their way out. They running. They shutting down their page. Can't take the heat. Shutting down their Twitter. But honey, justice is going to prevail itself. You can run, but you can't hide. Y'all will have to answer to this crime and the way y'all took this young lady's life. Y'all will answer. You're not going to be able to run forever. And like Kara Merrill said, which is also, she's a good blogger. I watch her a lot. 
Um, the feds are watching you. Might as well turn yourself in. You run, you just making it worse. I don't have my share of the female incel. That's why I love being by myself. I don't, I don't believe in fake love. I don't believe in forcing energy, forcing vibes. I don't been, in, I don't been invited to places, y'all. I didn't go not because I didn't like the person that invited me. I didn't like the people I knew that was gonna goddamn be there. I'm not for some vibes with nobody. This is not the season. Listen, we're going into 2023. This is my slogan. I'm not forcing no goddamn vibes with nobody. Either we click or we don't. I don't care if we got a mutual friend. That don't mean I need to be your goddamn friend. You have your own relationship with that person. I got mine. And as soon as I feel like our mutual friend is trying to stir up some tension, guess what? I'm going to let go of that person too. I'm 43 years old. I don't got time for that foolishness. I'm a full grown woman. I'm not playing that with these overgrown holes that's childish, want to throw shade and, and, and can't be woman enough to say it to your face. A lot of childishness. You got to go on the panel for one or two hours to drag my name with other holes who are also threatened by me? No. I don't think so. Anyway, y'all, leave y'all comment below. Let me know what y'all think about the segment that I share with y'all. Tales of the corrupt female. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about the segment because if y'all like it, um, I'm going to be sharing more personal stories. Not only that, I'm going to also do stories of other black women who also have had very bad and in some cases um, severe tragic endings with envious women. Because ladies, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Y'all around here just watching men. Y'all better watch these helpers too. They ain't no better. In fact, they worse. <laughs> so anyway, please make sure for y'all exit. Please hit that like video. Please share this video. I'm trying to get in the algorithms, y'all. I'm trying to like work on that. Ladies, I'm a low, I'm, I'm going to upload something on Mocha's Ladies Lounge soon. So get ready and look out for that. So anyway, y'all. It's been real. Y'all take care. It is your girl, your diva and knowledge. Lady Mocha, represent Mocha's Cafe de Paris, where I'm always serving you wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual awareness. Ladies, please make sure you subscribe to Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Y'all take care and hit that like button before you leave. It's not going to cost you no money. Hit the like button, y'all. I appreciate it. Be blessed.